All right. Good morning, everybody. So we're joined by Phil Flynn of uh, Price Group, and he's a Fox Business contributor. How are you, Phil? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, very exciting day today for energy. Yeah. So and give us the update. Uh, 1030 data. You know, last night we had the API. Then we just had the 1030 data. It, uh, if you could take us through the data, it looks like initial price action. Crude was trading $69, traded up to 69.55, and now we're trading a touch lower at 68.95. So what did the data say, Phil? You know, I, I basically think it's very supportive data anywhere you look in this report uh, and, and going into this report, you know, usually we talk to a lot of different sources, get a feel for, you know, which way they feel inventories are going. Uh, we talked to our sources about refinery runs, imports and exports. And this week, for whatever reason, it seemed like everybody was all over the board on this report. You know, we had expectations that we could see huge in inventory increases, huge inventory decreases. So no matter where you looked around the the world, it was a very weird report that people couldn't get a handle on. Um, when we saw the API report last night, um, it was kind of like kissing your sister. It was slightly bearish, but kind of a mixed bag. But it really set the stage for this energy uh, report from the Energy Information Administration really to set the mood for for the rest of the week. Um, one of the things that I've been pointing to is the amazing run of refinery runs, excuse the pun. Uh, and the U.S. refiners, of course, have been refining oil unlike anything we've ever seen before, especially for this time of year. Um, we did see refinery runs drop a little bit, which, which is not unexpected. We were calling for a drop in the uh, runs. But even as their capacity fell, it fell to what would be a record high for this week of 96.3% of capacity. Um, last uh, week, we we're, were above 98.3. It was a big drop, but this is the time of year you expect those runs to drop. But what was interesting that even with the drop of refinery runs, the actual oil that they ran through the refinery still came in at 17.6 million barrels. So they are being very efficient with the amount of oil that they're running through these refineries. Uh, and even though we're down from the all-time record high of two weeks ago, for this time of year, that's still a record. So the refiners are going crazy. The only reason they're going crazy is because they're making money. Refining demand around the globe, uh, demand for products continues to be strong. So when I see a number like that and I hear about, oh, you know, demand could be slowing in China or demand could be slowing in Afghanistan or wherever else, um, I think it's starting to be overplayed a little bit because if you look at the actual numbers, uh, they are showing some interesting things. The other thing that I thought was very good about this report was the demand for products. Week over week, we saw a big jump in gasoline demand. Um, that's probably reflective of what we're seeing in the overall economy. You know, if you look at uh, consumer confidence yesterday, hit an 18 year high. Yep. Uh, consumers are spending money. And, and I think that that's reflective in the gasoline demand. Really bodes well for the holiday weekend for travel. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's a pretty interesting day, actually. We have S&P trading at a new all-time high here, and NASDAQ's leading the way. NASDAQ's up uh, almost a percent. S&P's up about a quarter of a percent, but both at new all-time highs. As you said, kind of coming into this uh, holiday weekend, we have energy uh, actually was higher now. It's uh, it's actually so crude is up 50 cents, but uh, it's about 55 cents off the high. Uh, so question for you, Phil. You've been bullish. Uh, you've been on with us a number of weeks now, and you've been bullish long term. I had a question. What would it take for you to possibly change that bullish view? Like what would we need to see? Is it something on the demand side, something on the supply side, something out of the Middle East? It's got to be on the demand side, to be honest with you, um, because right now, if you look at where the global oil market is, we are structurally undersupplied, not just today, but tomorrow, a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. Um, we're in a new super cycle for oil. I don't know if people realize uh, what happened in 2014 and 15 to the global oil marketplace. We saw the biggest raping of, of capital spending uh, in that space that we've ever seen before. We've cut 
out over a trillion dollars in capital spending on new oil projects. And, and people don't realize the impact that's going to have on future oil production. You know, we can look at the market day to day. We can trade it. We can make money. You know, we can have, you know, $3 rallies, $4 breaks, $5 breaks. You know, but if you're looking at the big picture, you want to look at this market as, hey, you know, we're, this is just a pause on our way up to $150 a barrel. And I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, but we, we're behind the production curve right now. That cutback in capital spending has erased almost 10 million barrels of future oil production, um, and that's not going to be replaced uh, until prices get high enough uh, and the investments start to be made to replace that lost oil. Um, you know, a year ago, you know, people were talking about lower for longer. Remember that? Absolutely. You know, prices will never go up again. Um, you know, I, you know, some analysts a couple of years ago said we'd never see oil above forty dollars a barrel. Um, but they don't learn from from the previous oil cycles that we've seen in the past. Um, and 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 because of these false assumptions, um, energy companies made some decisions, some under duress, um, some because they believed in peak peak demand for oil. Uh, but that 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 cutback in spending is is left us structurally short uh, as we go to the future. Now we've been there before. You know, we were there in 1989 and 98. You know, when everybody said oil prices would never trade above thirty dollars again back then, and you know we see saw the same thing. We saw a cutback in capital spending. Um, you know, and then before you knew it, we were talking about peak oil. You know, a few years later, uh, you know. Now we're talking about peak demand. You know, demand. You know, we're going to have electric cars everywhere. We're not going to use as much oil. Um, but if if you look at, you know, I point to something today. Uh, for example, on India today. Uh, India. Think of India as the new China. You know, last decade everybody was caught by surprise. You know, all the guys that were telling you that oil was going down below thirty dollars. They talked about China, and China's like, oh my gosh, China's going to. You know, they have more bikes and cars. Think of think of India as, as a new China. They're going to start consuming. Their growth is going to exceed China's uh, growth uh, in a couple of years. Um, and it's going to be very difficult to meet that demand. Yeah, that's a lot of new cars, a lot of new oil needed, uh, definitely. And so, but on the shorter term here, based on the data that you're seeing, everything's still supportive of the longer term picture that you're seeing and nothing really in the data to kind of sway you from that, right? No, not right now. I mean, you know, if you're going to be a day trader or something, obviously we're hitting the upper Bollinger Bands. There's a lot of resistance up here. Psychologically, it's $70. Um, and guess what? We, we have the fear of the holiday, right? People, people want to go home. We've got light volume. You know, we're coming into a three-day weekend. So when you get into those holiday-type trades, you know, people have a tendency to go to the sidelines, take some money off the table sometimes so you can get some goofy moves. Yeah, well, you know, we definitely are a lot of shorter-term yeah. traders here. And, you know, it's interesting. I just put up a chart yeah. here. And I think a lot of our traders are going to pay attention to the fact that uh, over the past uh, three, five or six days, we've kind of 69.50 has uh, been a top a few times. So the fact that we just traded up to 69.50 came right off. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of people are going to pay attention to that and might have some. They stops should, but also that. look at that formation. It looks like a bull flag as well. Um, and so you don't really, even though you're bouncing off that formation, you're you're coming into kind of a, a tight area. Yeah, here. we're definitely so, in a we're definitely in an uptrend here, uh, and so yeah. that's where it's uh, kind of interesting. If if we take out right. that sixty nine fifty level, we'll probably do have, uh, some good upside there. Uh, exactly. So it'll be interesting to see what our other uh, energy traders on the shorter term are taking a look at. But yeah, uh, yeah, Phil, thanks a lot. A lot of great information. Thank you very much. I appreciate DLA it. Numbers, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. All right, talk to the Phil. Bye-bye.